Today we are talking about uh, how to find a good composition in your photographic references. The problem is with the camera, we tend to point and shoot, and then back in the studio, we just paint what the photograph gives us. And we wanna think through uh, different ways of approaching composition. One way is to see things in terms of um, shape, what kind of, sh or what shape of canvas do I want? And then also cropping or zooming in. Uh, there's a lot to work with in a photograph, and sometimes we can get two or three paintings out of one reference. So here are my references. This first one is in uh, Utah, and um, my photographs tend to be long, big, wide references, knowing that I can come back in the studio and shape them up. Now this is an interesting composition. There's a lot of nice dark and light on the cliffs, dark cliffs with a real light flat plane in front. So a lot of contrast there, but I'm way too much sky for the focal point. The focal point, the cliffs and or the trees are just so small and the sky and the foreground are just too big. So I'm gonna look at zooming in. My next one here, I'll zoom in a little bit and go for a bit more of a square. It's still a rectangle, but a bit more square. Tree here is too centered. I would move that over and probably cut the line of the hills just a little bit, come in front of it to create more depth. You know, zooming in here, the shapes of the cliffs that I'm interested in now are a lot bigger. And it gives me more of a squarish, square rectangle shape to work with. The third one with this would be a long horizontal where I get rid of most of the sky. And now, again, the cliffs are bigger, trees are bigger, zooming in, I got rid of a lot of the foreground that was unnecessary. Um, I also wanna think in terms of which do I want bigger or more important, the sky or the flat plane. I don't want them equal. So here I got rid of some of the foreground in front and have a bit more sky. Now the next photograph here, uh, it's also in Utah. Evening time, sun was going down. So some nice big shadows. And again, a big wide view. The cliff here is kind of small. A lot of empty sky. Uh, a lot of foreground, but I like the foreground now in this case because of the strong contrast of dark and light. A lot of pattern of dark grass, lighter dirt. Um, so there's a lot in the foreground and the cliffs. So I want to get rid of some of the sky plus some of the stuff on the sides is just too, too much. So my first change here would be more of a vertical this time. A square would work also because I do have stuff vertically that's very interesting to paint. Plus I have some things going horizontal, but not quite enough going horizontal. So I think a vertical works a little bit better here. Got rid of the stuff on the side, got rid of a lot of the sky, and I emphasized where my interest was, the foreground plus the cliff there on the right side. And the last one of the same photograph would be a, a long horizontal um, again, where I'm getting rid of most of the sky, some of the foreground, I still like the foreground. Uh, again, the shadows in here, the uh, dappled light on the tall shrubbery and grasses. So I cut down some of it uh, that way to get a longer horizontal. Because I can go horizontal, but if I have too much foreground, then that pushes the cliff back and makes it real small. So I'm gonna zoom in cut some of the foreground and a lot of the sky. And that has a real nice uh, composition to it. I might bring this tree down to kind of cut the strong line of this tall grass that just leads you right off the canvas. So a few changes on the shapes maybe, but I think that works pretty good. Now going to an old house in Georgia. Photograph here got kind of blown out. The sky doesn't have any color in it. And the light roof also goes too light, kind of chalky. The house itself is not chalky, even though it's a white house. There's plenty of color in it for white, but the roof and the sky, I think just get too light. 
but there's a lot going on here. And I kind of have two sides, you know, this side and this side to kind of work with some different compositions. Uh, but again, this is too big, too much foreground, too much interest in the trees. I want to zoom in a bit more. So my first one is zooming in on the left side of the porch, a little bit of the uh, left side of the house, some of the trees, um, dappled light in the ground and foreground. Got rid of the sky, most of the roof, and I like this foreground of this path leading you into the house and the dappled light in front also. Now, generally I will crop part of a house or a barn if it's, if, if it's in the painting. Of course, you never say you would never do something, but I, I tend to not put the whole house in the painting. If I get the whole house in there like this, it looks a little squeezed in, like these. there's no room outside the edges because the whole house is sitting in there. But the minute I go this way and let some of the house run off, some of the trees run off, then it has the feeling of space beyond the borders. And that's kind of real important because you can really feel cramped looking at a landscape where the whole of everything is in there. A whole house, a whole barn, a whole tree, a whole mountain. Let something run off. Zoom in a bit more and let something run off to give it more space. But this has a lot of strong light or kind of rim lighting, just the edges catching some dappled light up there, some light here. Um, some indirect light on the porch, but still a lot of contrast. And then the contrast of the dark trees against the house. This is a real nice composition here. And not too heavy on one side. I mean, this has a lot of weight and interest on the right side, but it's balanced by these big shapes here. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I probably would put all of this tree in there. It's a bit big, but... Uh, I might just lift this tree up more and get rid of some of this tree. Not sure yet. I have to do a couple of color studies or thumbnail drawings to kind of work, work that out. Then the um, third one here of this house uh, moves a bit to the left. I'm zooming in more, getting rid of a lot of the trees uh, still have the porch. The porch is really interesting to me. So zooming in, getting rid of more of the roof, a lot more of the trees. And now the house becomes really important. Whereas in uh, this one, house, the porch is really important, but the trees are pretty big. There's a little bit of competition, but I do like this one. And I also like this one. So I would make three paintings out of this one photograph. Same with the other photos. I definitely have three paintings in this photograph as well. Probably not as much in the cliffs. Cliffs, uh, probably just one. I kind of like the long horizontal on that one. Two paintings out of that uh, photograph. But I really like the strong light behind. See all the light sky holes, the sunlit trees back in here. All that really contrasts the darker house. So I would push this really warm. Maybe this is a bit cooler in areas to really show the uh, warm and cool contrast as well as dark and light contrast. Now this one also very interesting. Uh, in early fall, so some of the colors are changing. Some of the colors in the grass are changing. But a lot here with the house, the trees, the color, color variation in the foreground. But this is what I mean by everything is in the composition. You got the full house, full tree, full tree here, almost a full tree there, that runs off. And these full trees. And again, trees kind of dominate right now. So if my focal point is parts of the house, parts of some of the trees, I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. So my first zoom in right here, zooming in on the left side of the house, I really like the edge of the house here with the chimney against the red uh, tree over here, and then some of the foreground. I can create a pattern of this yellow. I don't know what it is, but you know, create a pattern that kind of pulls the eye in down at the bottom and moves it around into the composition, up the telephone pole and around. 
So a lot, lot there to work with. And you got the big, heavier shapes over here and a little bit smaller shape over there. So it's not equal on both sides. One's a little bit bigger, but it is balanced by a slightly smaller weight on the other side. Even like the um, septic tank in here, I think that works. Next one here, getting in a bit more, but I'm letting some of the house in front run off. Some more of the tree, I, I don't like this as much. It's a little bit half and half. Half foreground, half tree and sky. So. I would probably crop it a bit more. Let's do crop a bit more of the tree and a bit more of the house and go more like that. I think that would work better. And that's a bit like the first one, but a little bit, a little bit more involved in it. I didn't do much with um, this side of the house. And I could certainly play around with that, especially with the foreground. So I'm gonna cut down on the sky and get a lot more of the foreground. And that works well too. The house runs off on the right side. Might leave a bit more space on the right so it's not too close to the edge. But again, I have the pattern of the flowers uh, or the colored grass there in the, in the foreground to leave the viewer in. So a lot there, I think, to work with on those. A good photograph can give you two, maybe three paintings when you spend some time composing it and maybe thinking outside the box uh, compositionally. You know, we all struggle with composition. We want to get to the color right away or painting technique, but composition is really what makes a painting or doesn't make a painting. You know, um, composition can hold up with bad color or bad technique, but really good paint technique or really good color cannot make up for a bad composition. So composition first, really think through what you have in your reference material and what you can uh, do with it. So if you wanna see more about composition, watch this next video called The Composition of Great Landscape Paintings.